Hey guys, so you're interested in becoming a cop, that's great. Alright, so I'm making this video so that people out there who want to join the LAPD would have a better understanding of what it's, what it's going to take to become a member of the LAPD. From how to survive the academy, from requirements to uniform, from gear to training. This is going to be a three-part video series that I will be posting online. And my goal is to give you as much information as I legally can for you to succeed and become an officer of the LAPD. So let's get motivated, dedicated, educated. Alright guys, so first things first. You have to meet all the requirements to join the academy. You have to be legible. You have to be at least 21 years of age at the time of the hire. You could also take the written test if you are 20 and a half. For education, you have to have a high school diploma, a GED, or equivalent from a U.S. institution or a California high school proficiency examination certificate. A two or four year college degree from an accredited U.S. or foreign institution may be a good substitute for a high school diploma. Citizenship. You must be a U.S. citizen or a non-citizen who is a permanent resident alien and who, in accordance with the requirements of the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, is eligible and has applied for citizenship. U.S. citizen or a non-citizen who has a permanent resident alien and who, in accordance with the requirements of the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, is eligible and has applied for citizenship. And now for your background. You will be evaluated on your past behavior. They're going to look for if you ever in your past demonstrated positive traits that support your character in joining the police program. They're going to look at your past behavior if you ever demonstrated if you respect the rights of others, uh, that you can responsibly manage your personal finances, operate a motor vehicle safely and legally, and you have high standards for honesty and integrity. They want to make sure that you're mature, dependable, responsible, and you're consistent with those things. You're also going to do a polygraph examination, and that's going to be administered to all candidates. You, you just can't skip over that. And do yourself a favor, don't go online and look up videos of people taking polygraphs or how to cheat it, because when they connect you to the polygraph, sometimes that's one of the first questions they're going to ask you if you looked at those kinds of videos. For your vision, your uncorrected distance vision must not exceed 2070 in either eye, and the best eye must be at least 2040. And wearing eyeglasses, if you must have corrected vision to 20 to 30 in each eye. If soft contacts lenses are worn, they must have been worn for at least three months and the vision must be at least 2030 in each eye tested wearing the contact lenses. And there is no uncorrected distance vision requirement. If a LASIK procedure was performed, vision must be 2030 in each eye. In addition, candidates must be able to accurately and quickly name colors. For your health, you must be in excellent mental and physical health and in excellent physical condition. Height and weight. There is no minimum or maximum height or weight limit. However, your weight must be appropriate for your height and build. In the PFQ, the physical qualification test, and that's going to happen in the academy, they're going to look at how tall you are, how much you weigh, how old you are, and that's all going to account into how you will be scored for your physical. Alright guys, so just like any organization, they're going to want documents. So here are the documents you're going to need. Bring the following papers. You're going to need your birth certificate, the long version of your birth certificate, your social securities card, your driver's license, your high school diploma, your college diploma, if you have one, and copies of your transcript. When asked, bring the originals and two copies. It would help uh, make your process a lot faster if they don't have to make copies of the original documents. There are basically seven steps in the LAPD candidate process. Step one is online application. And you'll have more information on that if you just go to www.joinlapd.com. When you're done with the online application process, you will need to schedule a personal qualifications essay or PQE this is basically just a written test. I believe it's just going to be three random questions and you're just going to have to write a short essay about it. It's going to be questions about yourself, like uh, a time you acted before anyone else during an emergency or where you demonstrated some good qualities. Step two is the submission of a personal history statement or PHS. The PHS is about 24 pages long and this will be used for your background investigation. 
It will ask you to write down information about you, your previous work, places you lived, um, and it wants you to list about seven to ten people you know. And be careful who you list because they will call all of them, they'll look into it, they'll even talk to your neighbors. They'll even look at your teachers, your close relatives, um, so start trying to find out uh, who you're going to pick and make sure they have at least one or two things good to say about you. Step three is a PFQ, uh, also known as the Physical Fitness Qualifier. This involves physical training through the Candidate Advancement Program, also known as CAPS. I'm going to talk about more of that later. Step four is your polygraph examination, commonly known as the lie detector test. People who perform these tests are smarter than you think, so just be honest. Don't try to lie. They're going to make you answer a question more than once, and they're going to get different results. If it's uh, too far off the mark, then they're going to think that you know, maybe your integrity is not that great. So just be honest. All right, for your oral board interview, you're going to be in front of three people. One or two of them are probably going to be seasoned law officers. And they're going to be asking you questions about yourself, your goals, and why you're even there. What separates you from everyone else? What makes you so special? This process is going to take you on average about 30 minutes. So this is your chance to impress them, shine above the rest. Just try to be respectful, be confident, don't sit back. Uh, try to keep your back straight and try to make them smile or laugh. If you're able to do that, then bonus points for you. And try to show some serious determination. Do your best to show up there with a good suit. Make sure your head is shaved. Girls, bun up your hair. And try to keep to yourself. One of the, one of the first things they're going to get from you is the Candidate Investment Program logbook. They want to see if you've been going to CAPS uh, to see how determined you really are, if you're taking this serious, if you're making strides to improve yourself. So step five is the medical evaluation. Now this is a pretty simple and basic medical examination that's required before your employment. They will be testing your physical movements and they're going to collect some urine and hair samples. Uh, let me just put it this way. They want to make sure they're hiring people who are not currently using drugs. They want to see if people are physically fit to undergo one of the most challenging police training programs out in the country. Step six is the field investigation. Remember your personal history statement you filled out earlier? Well, they were going to talk to these people whom you listed down on your references. They will talk to your coworkers. they'll talk to your neighbors, basically people who you had contact with in your past and who gave some impressions about you, good or bad. Step seven, which is the final step, is the psychological evaluation. You're going to basically fill out hundreds of questions. This is a battery of voting questions that are designed to test not your intellect, but your state of mind. Now, being a law officer, I'm, I'm sure you already know it's a great and rewarding profession but it's also very physically and extremely mentally demanding. Okay, now I want to talk to you more about CAPS. The Candidate Advancement Program, or just CAPS, is a part of the recruitment process for LAPD. Now, if you're really serious about getting into the academy, this is something you really need to do. The program consists of different physical activities, including running, push-ups, sit-ups, and squats, and so much more. So why CAPS? What's it for? Well, it's going to help you reach that level of physical fitness to pass that LAPD PFQ, the Physical Fitness Qualification Test. It's going to also prepare you for the actual academy training, and it's going to help you get a lot more familiar with the discipline and the quasi-military protocols. So what do you need to wear, what do you need to bring? One of the first things you could bring is a watch. This is going to help you keep track of time, how long you're taking on each run, and they might even designate you as a timekeeper. Other things you're going to need to get is a couple pairs of socks. Now you're going to run through, through these very fast because the activities you do there are going to get you really dirty. You're going to be uh, covered in mud, dirt. You'll be doing sit-ups, push-ups on the streets. You'll be running up mountains. So it's always good to have a couple pairs with you. Uh, another thing you're going to need is they want you all to be uniform. So when your first day there, start getting your uniform ready. Don't let them uh, tell you what you need to wear. Uh, one of the things they're going to have you get is a blue shorts. You're going to uh, wear that and on top of that you're going to wear your your shirt and make sure it has your last name printed in the front and in the back. The objective is they need to know who you are and where you are um, from a distance. So if you can read it from a good distance then that's great. And of course, you're going to need your jogging pants. They want gray, preferably no pockets, but if it has pockets, that's fine. 
This, they're going to want you to tie that and tuck it inside. Don't let it hang or they'll pull you out for it. Okay, and what else? You're going to need a light gray sweater with your last name in the front and back. Now, make it a little bigger than this because they're going to want to be able to read your name from a distance. They want to be able to call you out. And the other things you're going to need to bring is a clear jug of water. Um, make sure it's not dark. They want to be able to see through it that you're not putting any kinds of liquids in there other than water. All right, and you're going to need a good pair of running shoes. Doesn't matter what uh, color they are, or what brand they are. Just make sure you have something simple. And of course, you're going to get your own fitness log there. And once you get there on your first day, they're going to show you exactly how to fill this out. This is where you're going to document all your activities, uh, how long you ran, how far you ran, um, how much time it took, your sit-ups, your push-ups, your squats. They're all going to document it here. After five days, they're going to sign it. And basically, this is also going to be one of the first things the oral board is going to see. They're going to see how dedicated you are if you went to the CATS program once, twice. They want to see how much effort you put in to joining the academy. Family Orientation Day. Family Orientation Day is about a week from your first day of training. It's going to be when your loved ones come to the academy around 5 o'clock in the morning. This is a very important day, as the name implies. It is the day where your loved ones will ha have a general idea of what you're going to be going through in the next six months. They will be briefed on topics including uniform, gear, training, nutrition, and important days to remember, and etc. They will also be given a tour of the training facility, as well as meet some of your instructors that you're going to be training with in the next 24 weeks. This is going to be a busy day for you because this is the day you're going to pick up your gear and sign up for different programs now that you're being a part of the LAPD family. What I'm trying to say is that you're going to be signing up for a lot of medical and dental coverages, uh, beneficiaries, life insurances, uh, pension plans, uh, charity programs, and LAPD stuff like that. Now when I say that this is a day you will pick up your gear, this is a day you will pick up your stuff like uniforms, bags, kits, etc. including your boots. Now once you get your boots, you need to start working on it right away. Don't wait till the last minute to polish your boots. The boots that you receive needs many, many days of tender loving and polishing before it turns out like a black mirror. That's part of the ritual, that's part of the tradition. Do not make the mistake of taking your boots and having them shine professionally. As a new recruit, you haven't earned that right yet. Your drill instructors are very smart and they can easily see the difference between a professionally shined boot and a boot that you worked hard on by yourself. And if you realize, I mean, well, if they realize that you've done them professionally, let's just say that there's, little, there's a little extra work for you in store when you go to the black line. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, part two and part three is coming out soon, so when it comes out, be sure to click on it. Thanks.